Hitman. Uh, and now he has to kind of try and fight his way back into this. Yeah, and Lemon, I, I saw people in Twitch chat a little while ago being like, hey, have you seen Lemon play? It was pretty good, actually. Like, yeah. uh, you know, genuine uh, Im impressed was, uh, with him. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, spotting over in the top left here to start things off, it will be the former world champion. It is Oliveira. Still is a world champion, Ben. Still is, yeah. That Oh, that is true, Wardy. That is yeah. true. I know. The uh, Katowice is not the world championship this year, so Oliveira gets to keep his crown a couple more months. So, <laughs> good for him. Is in the bottom right from uh, SSLT. It is Silky, a very cheeky, aggressive Zerg player. Would not be surprised to see him do things that are a little bit off kind of the norm in this series, especially playing against someone who he knows is typically stronger than him. Expect things to perhaps go a bit crazy and bonkers on his side. I mean, already he has gone for something a bit, a bit weird. Like this is, uh, this wasn't a really sick drone count going into this. This was very yeah. much like hatch gas before an overlord, and yeah, that's uh, that's already a bit spicy. And I mean, if you are up against the guy Oliveira, who uh, let, let's be real, like throughout SC2's history, which is freakishly long. Oliveira's never been bad at this matchup. He's always been incredibly fast. He's one of the guys that practice with Serral a lot. And going up against him, do you want to play a late macro game if, you know, you're not super comfortable with it? Like, absolutely hell no. Uh, so I'm already very excited what he's going to be throwing here. Gas has lined up very nicely to get a speed on the go very quickly. And six lings immediately. Yep, first ling's already coming out. Eight ling's now, so that's obviously aggression across the board. Um, obviously, only a single queen, usually with hatchery first. You get two queens at the same time, but with you building the ling's, you can't afford that. And now even more ling's start up, so we're absolutely sending aggression here early on. And uh, we're still mining gas as well. So Silky, despite ling speed starting, he's already back at 100 gas too, which already is suggestive of something, you know, another layer of aggression that's already coming to fruition here. <laughs> This is so funny to see. Like, okay, okay. So the fact that you come here, there's no drones here, that you're not greeted by four lings as per normal, and you don't see a queen in production there either, like, because you'd see that hatchery just blobbing them out of it. I mean, I, I say this, I saw that, and I'd be like, I'd be sweating if I was a Terran player already. Mm -hmm. I, I would, I would. But Oliveri's like, you know what? Third CC, let's freaking go. And he looks like he's been caught with his pants down here, Wardy. This is not the kind of start that you want. Nope. I mean, at least he did finish the CC on the low ground. So that is one benefit of this, that that CC is done. But the Bailing Nessus have had to be done. The Reaper is scouting about a little bit. Link Speed about to finish too. We can morph the Banes. The Bane Bus is going to be ready. I mean, there's going to be, what, a single Heli now? Because we've been Reactor and Marines now too. So that's not exactly ideal. We're going to keep uh, building just one Heli at a time as well. So... Not putting that onto that reactor, which isn't a bad thing because, to be fair, that reactor is about to die. It is about to die. And it's, I mean, Oliveira, what does he do here? He's got minerals to try and construct, like, a bit of a bigger wall here to go on, but the Banelings are coming, and that's exactly what he starts doing here. There is still a gap to the north here, and that is a lot of units in this base already. This might be one of our fastest games today already. That being said, nice little split and divvy up by Oliveira. And you got to remember... If he holds against this, that is 3cc, Wardy. I don't think this was enough damage from Silky. GG! <laughs> <laughs> he knows it as well, man. He's like, no, that was not it. GG indeed. Um, you said it right. If he holds, the triple CC is great. And the thing is, the scary part of these builds is that first burst. When that first burst comes through, it needs to do everything. You need to stay around, get rid of units, and then if you can get rid of enough units, maybe the stream through continues. The moment it was cleaned up and there was units left, I'm like, oh, he didn't lose every SCV. I was like, oh, yeah, this looks pretty good. And then it really started to sink in. And obviously, it sunk in on the Zerg side as well because Silky does not waste any time at all. And he says, GG. He's like, wait, guys, sorry, are we behind schedule a little bit? I've got you guys. I'll win this game real quick. Only a backfired, sorry. Uh, very slightly. I, I mean, I liked how it was all lining up, honestly, uh, for him. It, it looked kind of cool. Um, but... <laughs> When you need five bailings to blow up that that initial wall, and I think he really counted on delaying that first CC, you know, like just stopping it from being constructed entirely, because then it starts to get a bit wily. Like, 
does Oliveira then go for the big commitment to get it done, get it completed, maybe sacrificing more SUVs and things like that. Maybe being greedy, switching around the buildings as well. Like you said, why do it when it's going to die? I think Oliveira made a lot of very decent calls that game that, you know, granted him the win there. Yeah, no, he uh, he definitely realized a little bit what was up. It maybe wasn't the perfect wall off in time, but he got the bunker in the back as well. He had the split ready. He can afford to take some damage to this as well, so... Works out beautifully, and we get ourselves ready now to go into uh, game number two of this best of three on Ghost River. So, starting this off, getting this in game, Oliveira versus Silky, game number two. Absolutely, and this is one of the newer maps. Very cool to get into it, and spawning over in the top right as our blue cheeky Zerg player, it is Silky. Taking on the red Terran in the top left, this is going to be Oliveira. I've liked a lot of these new maps. Like, there's, they yeah, look good. smaller. They look smaller and tighter in, in some ways, but the, the journey to the other base is still quite long, getting a, across the map and what have you, because it isn't super direct. Now, this map is definitely one of the smaller ones, I would say, because you can get across very quickly. Um, and, and within regards to what bases do you take, it's very, very obvious, right? So those builds from Marrow in the past where it's like, okay, I get SCB out on the map to scout. I, I block the third, maybe put a bunker there, uh, get the Reaper on the go. They, they can be very scary. Yeah, very annoying. And it also really benefits Terran late game because how do you ever take the plus one base as a Zerg that you're meant to have in like a long game in CVT? You kind of not. Mm -hmm. This map kind of works nicely, you know, as it's, you know, for a Terran. Zerg still seem to like, I think the size of it, they actually like being able to put on some good aggression. Kind of saying, well, we think we don't think the Terran should be able to necessarily get to all six bases. Obviously, that's not always the case, but yeah, it's, I, I'm with you when you say that these maps are interesting. It's definitely a different vibe of map. They all came off of a, a freestyle TLMC, so where kind of map makers were allowed to be a bit crazier. There wasn't as many like hard and strict rules. I think that was just a, a really big plus because it, it's just added a whole bunch of creativity with these new maps, and we've kept some of the more standard maps. Just makes it a very fun map pool right now, very diverse. Of course, we can do this a bit more easily as well because there's nine maps now allowed, so there's a couple more vetoes each. It just allows each map to be a little bit more out there. You know, you're not punished competitively by one map being, like, kind of weird. So that just has to be an instant veto every time. So I think that has a, a big role to play as well. Definitely does. In this game, Oliveira will do the SCV scout because it's like... Okay, the map's a bit shorter, shorter of a rush distance, I do imagine. And given that you did literally go for one of the crazier Zerg builds out there, where you don't make an Overlord, but you make a Hatchery and a Gas before that, uh, I'm not surprised he goes for that. But Silky doing something far more standard here. Just four links to hold off the initial Reaper, which should be enough if micro correctly. And basically the Zerg's hoping to not lose a drone. And hopefully not lose a Zergling either, but Oliveira does get away with a little bit of scouting, a little bit of uh, the skill check here. Tiny bit of a pause going on. Maybe Silky's like, damn it, lost a Zergling. Let me just cool down a little bit. Lost the link, smashed his key. He's like, no, <laughs> my keys are everywhere. <laughs> Maybe just sound or Maybe a hotkey as well. Always a factor when these guys are playing on these accounts uh, that are specifically for this event. Could be anything. Anyways, it was a quick fix, and we're back to it, so Oliveira gonna end himself one link early, and he's on his way to that starport, of course, no triple CC this time, so just CC on the natural into the 1-1-1, and we'll allow him to put a little, a little bit more pressure in general now. Yeah, and I mean, why not? Like, even though you have that little bit of a, a swing around there in the middle where the land army gets across a little bit slower, doesn't mean the air units will, and getting out either a Banshee, or we'll get to see, I think it's just gonna be a Viking Liberator here. I mean, that would be mm -hmm. a pretty good call um, in, in a situation like this, because Silky did scout with two Overlords, not just one on this map. So he has them both. This Ooh, Medivac, mm. Oliveira. I mean, this, this isn't super weird, right? But this can absolutely get a lot of damage done very quickly if, if, if left unchecked. Yeah, and Oliveira's opening series was actually, of, of this tournament, was actually just a couple of Hellbat all-ins back to back. So that army drops down. And he's just going to send some Hellbats here and say, well, so if you're not being overly aggressive, I kind of expect you to be overly greedy, perhaps. And if, if that's his read, if that's his goal, it's perfectly true so far. There's lots of drones on the way, very minimal units. 
They do get rid of an Overlord there, which is a problem. Supply blocked at pretty much the worst time as these units come across the map, and we have got a handful of Queens to try and fend off this entire Hellbat Marine push. Yeah, I mean, Queens are damn good, but are they this good? That supply block is absolutely crucial here. I mean, this single Overlord here, buying a little bit of time, will be a Cloak Banshee follow-up as well. And I mean, this, you might be like, hey, why isn't he attacking with those Marines? He has to go, go, go. The armory's not yet done. Now it's completed. Now the army will all get together. But I tell you what, this already hasn't done what I thought it was going to done. But yeah. the fact that Oliveira has teched out of it already, like even though the investment was there to deal a lot of damage, he's not all in with this by any means. Nice having Hellbats at the back here. Nice spawn crawlers as well, just to mitigate that damage. Ah, nice moves on uh, both fronts here. Yeah, Oliveira defends very well, and uh, Silky defends very well himself, minimizing what can be done. So very nicely handled. Lair is on the way up from Silky as well, so we just see that starting to come through. And the Baneling Nest is going to be adjoining as well. So again, that Baneling Nest on the way. A few more drones all coming out. And we have a couple more Marines just unloading it out of the medivac. We can get ready to push in from the front one more time. Yeah, I, I, I do like these Hellbat builds. Um, I mean, right now, the fact that there are no Banelings out or at this point, there are 10 Queens, which is uh, maybe one or two more than you normally have. But Banshee does fly into the oh. natural here without Cloak, though. Oh, my. That is a blunder and a half. Cloak finishes as it died. That could have been so damn crucial. Yeah, because if that Banshee's cloaked right now, the Spore Crawler's not ready. So you would literally just be sat there killing drones. So Oliveira just pulls the trigger a moment too soon. That is a... Uh... I mean, that's just rough. That's a mistake as the Hellions though drop in. And Silky saw this coming. He this went right over a hatchery, but no response. It means that five drones going down already. Now he more from Hellbats. And in the corner, these Hellbats can just sit and fight for a little while longer as well. A bit of micro oh, too. Lovely. Yeah, just getting absolute value out of this. I mean, all these things are going to go down. The Queens will be able to get the medevac, and this will be the end of it. But this was expensive. The drones, the lings, the Queens having to be here. And now we've got Hellions over here that may try and hit this mineral line too because everything was in the main. The Banshee oh, forced the no. drones to pull as well. So we're going to just get in and some barbecue. They're all lined up. We split a couple away. Oliveira continues to hunt for the oh, line. No. Oh, my God. Well, you know, it all started off really badly with that Banshee. About as badly as it could, but it all ends well. <laughs> 38 drones falling to these attacks. And I tell you what, when you see one Banshee fly in, Maybe that was the Giga master plan from Oliveira, making him think that it was just a safety banshee, yeah. you know, without cloak. And then it's like, you know, you're like, I don't need spores really, do I? And then you come in and then 38 drones die. I tell you, this, this world champion over here, he's got the mind, he's got the speed, he's got it all. It's funny because the, the games he played in round one of this event was so fast as well. But this series is almost a little bit slower than it, but like still pretty quick. <laughs> so he's the the matches he's winning, he's winning extremely quickly. But then he got pushed into a long three game series against Lemon, which he lost. It was just kind of wild. Definitely not the storyline I thought I'd be telling of Oliveira this season. Oh, of course, this is looking great for him, and he's looking to basically spin this one out two to zero, and obviously would then be two and one in this group. A couple chances to make the playoffs with the next couple of rounds of action. Yeah, and I mean, over here, I, I love this little, like, position here. Like, it's it's not so close yeah. that it's super scary, but it does mean that Ling's getting on top of those Marines. It's not super nice, is it? And I mean, we'll start unseaging these tanks, trying to get as close as he possibly can, but I tell you what, that is a good army of Queens, man. I mean, they don't deal good damage, and we'll get <laughs> some Ling's round the back here. That is very nice by Silky, but this... The upgrade's kicking in now as well. I mean, Oliveira is... He's not making this look super easy. It's got to be said. It, it could definitely look a bit easier for him. I mean, that Banshee as well, still alive here. Going to start tickling these drones once more. Hydra's on the way for Silky, and that's a big Terran fit flock here. Yep, that is a lot of Terran moving through the center. The army coming over the right-hand side. Marine medevac tank going to come and... Uh push over and get onto the creep and obviously this is the kind of army with which which with an upgrade lead it's going to be terrifying to play against we just finished bane speed did we actually get any of these banes oh. finishing up they do but the marine firepower was enough the lings on the left hand side well we need to target fire down the banes as well but the banes get caught up a little bit so we can target oh. fire those down that's good enough for Oliveira, right like he's still trading well and he's just reinforcing behind this so he's just going to have more and more stuff coming two two upgrades already starting where silky is going to be trailing 
I mean, still he's gonna get some hydras up, but now I feel like he's got a lack of veilings. Yeah, I mean, this, this, if you were to tune in and see what kind of Zerg this was, you'd be like, is this me or Micah? It's just Ling Hydra, you know? But mm. Bailings are coming in, his eco is significantly worse than the Terran. It's not where you want to be. And as soon as the rock starts tilting away from you, like kind of towards you in your direction, absolutely falling on you, the Zerg does not want to be in that position. And Oliveira, getting the fourth base up and running. As you said, getting the upgrades as well, going up to eight barracks now as well. This is when the parade starts to really kick in and there's no hive on the way. There's just, it's hard to see a bright future if you're the Zerg fan here. Yeah, it's, um, it's tough. I mean, at least you didn't die to the first push after losing 40 workers, but yeah, it's, it's obviously not been anything that he's done. It's not like he's killed a mineral line during all of this, so he's kind of evened it out while surviving. Maybe that's his goal now. He is counterattacking, trying to run across. There are Marines here. Maybe not enough. Uh, upgrade leads about to kick in, but isn't ready yet. At the same time, we're also pushing, of course, with the larger army. So that's going to be here. Looks as though we're going to pull the trigger. It is going to be before the 2-2 of the Terran player. That might just not matter with this how much stuff there is. The tank's getting a lot of damage done initially. And these bands reach. Nope. Target fired beautifully. And now it's just Hydras. And Hydras on their own really don't do anything. No, they're so brittle, so flimsy. I mean, they pack a punch, but... This is now superior upgraded Terran, and Banelings is trying to roll in. They have to fight off Creep. That one tank in a beautiful position back there as well. Single Queen will wrap around to take it out. The Queen flank. Um, but Oliveira, too much, too powerful. But I tell you what, coming back from losing 38 drones to a Hellion run by, ah, not bad stuff. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was going to be more 